Hello students, welcome back to the next English video. Today we'll be discussing on unit 4 that is school stories. The topics that we'll be discussing are making notes, expanding notes, speech in stories, fictionalized autobiography, poem that is metaphor and simile, semi-formal letter writing and the last one is writing a diary so let's begin with the class making notes we all know what notes is all about making notes is a way of collecting relevant information for a task based on a reading or listening passage and it's a very important skill for summary writing that is when we tend to shorten the passages here you need to ignore all the examples and minor details and just get down to the essential facts or ideas you don't need to write down the whole sentences just focus on the key phrases and then you can group them explain them or you can join them together later if necessary or use them as a basis for revision or planning a speaking or writing skill so this is how we make a notes expanding notes expand which means expanded or becoming larger or increase in size or develop or extent when you turn a list of notes into a piece of continuous writing as you need to do when you are turning a plan into an exam answer here we first put the notes into a logical order so that one idea leads into the next and ideas which are related are expressed in the same sentence or in the linked sentences. The writing must be in full sentences and should no longer sound like a list. You need to produce an answer which is long enough to fulfill the task but which does not go over the length limit you have been saying here. Remember, you should not cross at the length limit. Speech in stories. In narrative writing, we use a dialogue that is a conversation between a characters, if it be a people or an animal. This dialogue, it gives a different varieties and drama to the telling of the story and it also shows the relationship between the speaker. Here, when you are writing a speech, sometimes the speech may be a reported or indirect speech is used to explain what a character said instead of a direct speech. So speech in stories means a dialogue if it be a reported or indirect speech or a direct speech. This speech that has been used in a story is called a speech in a stories. Our next topic is a fictionalized autobiography. I hope you still remember what is fiction and non-fiction which we learned in the previous video. Fiction it means a made-up story from the author's imagination and Non-fiction, which means retelling of actual happening about the people, class, or an event. So, fictionalized autobiographies are mostly a truthful telling of the author's experience with section fictionalized to protect the innocent. That is, the gaps are being filled where memory fails and occasionally the story is being rearranged for a maximum narrative effect. In order to have a clear concept about a fictionalized autobiography, I want you all to go through text 4a that is in page number 41, that is a fictionalized autobiography about a young Esther. It is an example of a fictionalized autobiography. This means that Though the events of the narrator's life are generally based on true experience, yet the stories are being exaggerated 
to make them more dramatic and to keep the reader engaging. The emotional responses are also made more extreme and the speech are used to make the characters and encounter seems more vivid, though it is not likely that the writer would be able to remember every word that has been spoken in conversation which took place many years before, yet the narrator seems more powerful having a feeling of a vivid. So this is all about a fictionalized autobiography. Next is the two poetic device that is metaphor and similes. When we tend to go through this two poetic device, this seems to be seen, but they differ from each other. Let's see. Metaphor. A metaphor is a word or phrase that is used to make a comparison between two people, things, animals, or a place. For example, the snow is a white blanket. Here, the snow is being compared with a blanket. Next example. He is a shining star. So here again, someone is being compared with a shining star. So a metaphor is a word or a phrase that is used to make a comparison between two people, thing, or a place. Similis. When two things are compared using like or as is called a similis. For example, you were as brave as lion. So here in this example, we can see that you, that is a person, is being compared with a brave lion using the word as. Next, they fought like cats and dogs. Here again, they, that is someone, is being compared with a cats and dogs using the word like. So these are some of the examples of a similis. In this two poetic device, we can see that they have a similarities, but the differences is that when a similis is being compared with something, they use the two word that is like and as. So do not forget this. Letter. When we think about a letter, there's two things that comes in our mind that is formal letter and informal letter. But today we'll be learning a new one that is a semi-formal letter. What is a semi-formal letter? Semi-formal letter is something you write to a person whom you know but you do not share a cordial relationship with them. For example, if you write a letter to your friend's parents, then it would be a semi-formal letter. It is also used in non-formal relationship but in this type of letter it requires a respectful and polite approach though you are writing to someone in your family you will not speak to them in the way you would speak to your friends of your own age rather you would speak more in a respectful and polite manner here try not to be too complaining or emotional as you do not wish to upset them or give the impression that school is completely unbearable. You may therefore wish to use a light-hearted tone as Roald Dahl does in text 4E that is in page number 48 when he calls the porridge as a ship droppings. Letters of this kind are usually a mixture of reflection, description and references to even so remember semi-formal letter is written to the person whom you know but do not share a cordial relationship and in this type of letter you tend to use more polite words last topic for today's video is writing a diary i'm sure every one of us we maintain our own personal diary so a diary is a personal record of events, experiences, thoughts and observation rendered to a man an account of himself to himself. In this sense, diary writing may be regarded as 
a type of conversation or monologue as well as a form of autobiography. Diary style consists of either simple sentences or a compound sentences. This makes the writer seem simple and even childlike but as you usually write a diary for yourself, there is no need to use a complex grammar. The aim is simple to record what happened and what you thought and how you felt about it. Let's learn the 7 tips on how to write a diary. The first tip is be honest. When you write your diary, try to be honest. Give the full story of your opinions, thoughts and fears. Open up and let your feelings pour onto the pages because holding back helps nobody. The second point is be detailed. Think of it like a book. Try to pour out your thoughts and write more in detail rather than a brief description. The third tip is spell check. If you are writing a diary, then you need to go through for entries to find poor grammar, punctuations, and spelling. Even the most diligent of minds will mess up every now and then, so look out for any little errors that crop up as you are writing each and every entry no matter how small or irrelevant. The fourth one is the deaths. It is a good idea to always include the death when you are writing the entry. Fifth, give your entry a title. It's easier to scan through your notes later if you include a short and descriptive subject for your daily entries. If not, it will just look like a pile of notes, hard to navigate in. The sixth one, write short entries. Most people start out by writing long diary entries, even many pages containing thousands of characters. It is not even required to write in it every day. The seventh one is, don't worry if you can't add it every day. You are not committed to write in your diary every day only because you have a diary. Add to it whenever you feel. Skip a day, skip a week, it does not matter. What's important here is that you have to add to it from time to time but the more often the more fun afterwards. So these are the 7 tips on how to write a diary. This is all for today's video. Thank you and stay safe.